Praise God, everybody. We are so glad that you're here with us today. I'm here with my girl. Hey, everybody. My co P. I appreciate her rocking with me. Thank you for allowing me to be here, sir. Yeah, we are here to lead the discussion. Uh, of course, that we're going to talk to each other. We want you to talk to each other or even begin dialogue yourself with some friends about real love. Somebody say real love. Real love. It's amazing how the, the life that we're living right now has taken such a dramatic turn. Uh, but uh, we believe the word of God has everything that we need. Absolutely. And so we want to begin this discussion. Again, thank you for your time. Matter of fact, why don't you share this with your friends? Text somebody, email, let them know, call them, let them know that uh, Pastor Show. And co-pastor Jackie. Yeah, live and direct into your living room. And we're about to start this discussion that's going to last throughout February. I also want to ask you to join us on uh, Wednesday nights, yes. the Wednesday edition of Real Love, hosted by yours truly and co-pastor. Uh, you just have to register for it. It's absolutely free, but you do have to register so we can send you the link, the Zoom link where we are on live on Wednesdays throughout this month and we are continuing the discussion uh, about relationships and real love so it doesn't matter where you are in your relationship right uh, you could be married or you can be uh, unmarried uh, some people don't know whether or not they're single we'll get to that later on a uh, part of that is dating dating and then on the other side you have the widowed we have the widows which is something that was brought to my attention yes that we haven't really covered we right. and you know what that's really relevant for where we are right now right. uh it's relevant because with the amount of deaths yeah. that occurred last year uh, we cannot categorize widows as being persons who are of the seasoned saint community right uh, there are a lot of young male and female widows, and we need to really address that and even see what the word of God says. Okay, a quick word of prayer. Father, we just thank you and we thank honor you. you for this opportunity to minister to your people. We thank you, God. We're asking that you would give us the tongue of the learned. Touch my mind, touch co-pastor's mind as we discuss real love. You are, Father, the author of real love. We're asking, Lord, that as people are tuned in, that you would begin to touch their singleness, you would begin to touch their marriage, touch whatever level or area of relationship that they need you. Holy Spirit, be present. We ask your blessings over these sessions in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. Amen. Okay, let, let's 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 jump right in. Uh, I'll give you a scripture in just a moment, but I, I want to jump right in, Kopi. Okay. Um. This is part one, and we want to talk about getting to know you. Yes. Getting to know you. And I believe that one of the most important constructs we have to deal with is the fact that there's been no research for uh, covenant versus COVID. That's good. There's been no research. We, we are forming the data, the right. empirical evidence. Uh, I had a conversation even with our church, and I told them, that what we're living through will be the topic of a dissertation soon. Yes. After we come out of this, people will write books about this. People will, will gather the data, the empirical evidence, do uh, qualitative interviews and quantitative data discussions and data mining to find out how we survived or what tools were used to survive. So we're in the middle of trying to figure all of this out. Yes. And because there are no books currently written about how to survive a quarantine relationship, we, we have to do our best. We're not saying we know everything, but we have to do our best to bring you the word of God and practical information to help you survive or even begin, because we're going to talk to people who are dating or about to start dating, right. how to begin a relationship in digital dating. Yes. And so we have... In the old times, we have BC, we have AD, now we have PC, post-pandemic. How do we... Post-COVID. Post-COVID. <laughs> how, how do we function in society today? So I think that that's relevant for where we are in this day and time. We can't ignore the fact that many people feel trapped. Yeah. We, we can't ignore the fact that the government shut us down and had to stay in the house 
and people had to deal with loneliness. Now, don't don't think I mean loneliness mean meaning nobody at the house with you. Right. Because some people dealt with loneliness with a house full of people. Yes. But we had to tackle and deal with that anxiety and that fear. What if I never meet anybody? How can I meet someone? It, it, it's it's been it's been absolutely mind-boggling all that we've had to deal with with COVID. Right. And so we want to we want to get into this. Um, I want to get a scripture to you. Deuteronomy twenty four and five. Um, this is a foundational scripture. One of the foundational scriptures we're going to use. Deuteronomy 24 and 5, it reads like this. When a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out with the army nor be charged with any duty. Here's what he's supposed to do. He shall be free at home one year. Somebody say one year. One year. And shall give happiness to his wife from whom he has taken. So, so, so maybe, <laughs> maybe God gave us a COVID marriage scripture. Okay. What he's saying is no war or work. When you get married, so all of our newlyweds, we're talking to you. No war or work. This, so so let, let me back up. You were supposed to make enough money. Okay. Prepare a house, a nest egg, so that you could be excused from war and work to spend the first year of your marriage getting to know each other. All day long. All, the Lord said. All. He wants me. All day. Looking at you. All day. You cannot escape me. He said, sit on the couch beside me. <laughs> he said, don't go on the other side of the couch. Sit on the couch with me. This is what the Bible says. But we're in the house together, though. We're in the house together. Beside me is what the scripture says. <laughs> okay. It's not what it says. That's what it implies. Okay. You didn't read the whole thing. It's when you get to the maps, right by the maps, right before you see the maps, that's where it says. Pray this me. month. Pray this month, people. Right beside Pray. the maps. You got to get a real Bible. The digital Bible don't say it. But in the real Bible, right before you get to the maps, it says, thine wife. <laughs> it doesn't say that. Shall sit by thine husband. Please pray for me all month I'm long. Y'all need to pray and to see. Please. So, so, so maybe this is a good scripture to think about. I that think God awesome. says, if you are isolated together, there ought to be enough love, enough understanding, enough tools involved yeah. so that you all can coexist under those extreme circumstances. Hmm. I think, I think that's really, really important. And then 1 John chapter 3, 16. Copas, would you read that for us? 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. That's so, that's so good. Let's unpack that for just a moment. It says, we know love by this. Yes. This is how we know love, that I give my life up. So that cancels all of the arguments about what I want, what I need, wow. uh, the, the selfishness, right. I think, or what I deserve. No. This is how you know love, laying down the life, mm. laying down the desires, laying down the personal preferences. Now, I know that's difficult to understand, but, but what we can't do is let COVID relax standards. That's so good. Oh, that's good. I need to say that again. Yes. COVID, you cannot allow the coronavirus to relax kingdom standards. Okay. And the standard is the laying down of your life or watch this preferring yourself over them. No, prefer them over you. Wow. So, so let's, let's, let's move forward. Okay. Let's talk about pain. It's relevant. Let, let's deal with pain. It's very, Copia. very relevant. Uh, were we made to quarantine? <laughs> I, I had this conversation with you. I, I think that it's very challenging for particularly women in the 21st the 21st century woman I think the struggle is real. Ladies, I'm coming for you this month. I promise. I, I got your back. But, man, I got your back also. But the 21st century woman, I think it's challenging um, in today. I don't know that we were created for quarantine because of all that we do. So learning, as you stated before, the standards of what that looks like and not negating those standards of selflessness and what that looks like in this in this current time that we're in is huge that we have to unpack because there's pain there 
because before, and we talked about it on Wednesday, we talked yeah. about there might be a day in the a time in the day where you go your separate way, I go my separate way, and then we come back together for a couple of hours of the day, but being made, made to quarantine, not, not an option, but made to quarantine over hours for several days, it really does, it can be, it can be a place of pain because of so many different diet, different factors or different things that are going on within ourselves. Yeah, and uh, I agree with you because here's, here's what I believe. I believe that we were built to live in relationship. I believe that we were built to live in fellowship. I, I don't believe that we thrive in isolation. I agree. And this was an unusual isolation because even introverted people like having an option. Yes, truth. You, you might not want anybody to come over. But if you want to go outside, you want that one time a week you want to go outside, but now all of a sudden I you can't. can't go outside, now you're mad. So now <laughs> some of the introverts enjoyed the beginning of the quarantine, right. but now all of a sudden, like, I, you mean I can't leave? So I, I, think that, I think that I have to stand by my, my earlier thoughts. Even early in ministry, I would always say we're built to be in relationship. We're built to be in congregation, and, and I believe that. I believe we're supposed to come together for fellowship. I believe we're supposed to come together uh, in in worship, but I do believe that even though we re- we may not have been built for it, that we can develop the tools to endure it. Right. I believe that we can develop the necessary tools to endure this type of living circumstance. So, Pastor Show, let's talk about some tools that we can utilize. Okay. To get through this or work out this pain, as you put it, that we that we might currently feel. What are some things, some tools that we can give them? Well, well, you always say breathe. Yes. Breathing is good. So, I mean, they even, they even teach that you should do breathing exercises and, and not to the point where you're huffing and puffing like, <laughs> I'm not talking about like that, or labor pains, <laughs> like I'm not talking about labor pains, breathing, but it is moments in time where you take breaths and it is actually a relaxing exercise where you take relaxing breath Breaths, and here it is. It's so important to do that because you need oxygen to transmit to your brain so that you can think and not make irrational decisions or not have erroneous thoughts. But just taking that time just to inhale and exhale, it is a relaxing, soothing tool that you can utilize just to breathe so that you can, so that you can receive. Yeah. So calm down and breathe. You said think. Let's make that number two. So number one, breathe. You said think. Let's make that number two. Think. But um, let's clarify that. Don't overthink. That's good. How about that? Think, but let's not overthink. Um, Because if you overthink, then that becomes painful. Right. The process of overthinking becomes painful. Um, and, And you know what? I, I'm, I am a person that's, that, that believes in third parties. I believe in uh, counseling, having someone, a referee, someone that can be there to help you with your perspective. So sometimes if you are a, a over analytical person, you may need to go to a uh, counselor and they help you not to overthink, help you address what's going on inside of you, but not to overthink to the point where... It's driving you crazy. And what they'll teach you how to do is release. Yes. Let's make that number three. So number one, breathe. Say breathe. Breathe. Number two, think. Yes. Say think. Think. But don't overthink. Number three, let's say release. Release. You, we have to learn how to release pain. Yes. And not to hold on to pain. Right. Because when you're in it all day, wow, that's difficult. Because I think if you don't release, it will turn into bitterness. Mm. It will turn into a callous heart. It could turn into a, here it is, and this is a big one, a reprobate mind, meaning that you have turned so far away Mm. from what you believe or what you, what you desire to be. It, it can turn you in a direction that you never intended on going. So I think as far as releasing it and it does something to the physical body, you holding on, I mean, in studies of the, Studies and research has even shown holding on to things can cause your body to have an adverse reaction. So releasing it is very important as far as it is concerned to pain. And I think the last one is to live. 
Don't forget to live. Yeah, you got to live. Like, just because we're being made to quarantine doesn't mean that you cannot live your life. That you can find, here it is, find things that you like to do today. What makes you happy today? What are some things that you want to try today? I was sharing uh, with one of our staff this morning even that I think that I, I really miss the fact that I didn't take wood shop. I think I would have been awesome in high school because I like power tools. I am fascinated. Like Ed has a whole bag of power tools here that I just want to dig through. And like I could build so many things today. So it's okay. It's what makes me happy. My happiness is my own. I own it. So figuring out how you want to live today. Hey, I was talking to uh, Pastor Nika and she said one of, one of her girlfriends exercises her thing. That is her release. Because if she don't, she's going to pop off on everybody. She's going to go off on everybody. But I have to release it. So figuring out what it is to live. You okay? I no, won't use no I am not okay. <laughs> I, am, I am not well at this moment. <laughs> and I'm not well because... All things are okay, well, so, Jesus. So... I believe, I believe well. <laughs> that you should discover new things. Yes. I, I believe that you should try uh, new things to, so that you can live. But then, but then there's, uh, there are limits also to what you should be discovering. So that, say, and I'm not going to point any fingers, but just say your husband's studying and he hears power tools. <laughs> If, if your husband's studying the word of God or praying and seeking God's face and he hears a mill saw. He, <laughs> I did look up he's one. He's going to wonder a who, has a, who yeah. has a mill saw. <laughs> but living through this pandemic, like I have to find things. Like seriously, I wanted to find things that I could live. And Pastor I, Gerald, you should. I want to know who's in the house <laughs> with a saw. Who's in my house, uninvited, with a saw? It's not a saw, it's a drill. But nonetheless, I don't subscribe to um, I'm going to live my best life and you're living it in an erroneous bubble. I don't subscribe to that because living your best life can have so many meanings, right? Like we could take that way. Left. I'm living my best life. And they even wrote a song about it. But, you know, I mean, everybody's, and that was a big thing. I'm living my best life. Okay, but what does that best life look like? as far as living is concerned. Because you do not live on this earth alone. You do not live in a, you, you're made to quarantine, but you don't live in a bubble. There's yeah. still things happening in the earth, in your environment, in your community. So living has to be, it cannot be so subjective that it will cause you to deter from your, your core beliefs, your morals, and your values. Yeah. So living your best life um, still should be a construct within the word of God. I agree. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Thank you for saying that. Because, and, and the reason why I believe that that is uh, so important is because throughout these challenging times, divorce has gone up. Oh my gosh. The, the, the number of divorces is skyrocketing. And I want to I want to address that because we're right now we're mainly focused on uh, this 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 discussion is mainly for married people. Although you know you should peek in from a peripheral even if you're single uh, or or dating or whatever the case may be. Uh, the the divorce thing is serious. The Bible says that Moses gave the bill of divorcement because of the hardening of the people's hearts, right. not because he wanted to, but because they would not change, they would not adjust, and their heart was so rigid yes. that they could not forgive. They could not move on. They could not stop doing mm. whatever it was that they were doing that was ruining their lives. Right. And I believe that we ought to be cognizant of things like that. So a book we normally recommend uh, is Dr. Sarah Sumner, Just How Married Do You Want to Be? Awesome book. And I think that's great, that's great reading for everyone because it, it, it really deals with the trauma of divorce. And those of you who are divorced, we love you, but you understand what I'm saying. It is traumatic to go through a divorce. It is, it is gut wrenching. Right. Uh, Dr. Sumner calls it a decapitation mm. because you're, you're one, you're unified. The only way to separate is, is to shed blood. Wow. If you are one body, if you are one soul, if you have come together in unity and you divorce, there's always a shedding of blood. Yes. It is, as she describes, a decapitation, head from neck or head from body. And that's a, as gruesome as that sounds, that's as gruesome as God sees it. Wow. And we got to be very, very careful. Um, your heart, everyone, everyone, 
you have to learn whether, no matter if you're in a good place or a bad place in your marriage, you have to learn to keep your heart soft. Yes. You gotta, you gotta move away. You have to move away from the heart of stone mm. and have a heart of flesh, a heart that is malleable, a heart that is transformable. And many of us don't realize that you are not your own. Right. You are, once you give yourself to marriage, you are not your own. Your life belongs to God. You vow and pledge to them. Yes. To, to work with them, to be with them, to love them. And you have to get over uh, the idea of I can do whatever I want to do. Mm. You got to get over the idea of uh, I can be what I want to be. No, you belong to God first. It's either, let's put it like this. It's either your plan or God's plan. Right. I think, I think that's a strong statement. It's either your plan or it's God's plan. Let's wrestle with that. Yes. I think that even with what you just said before, as far as a stony heart is concerned, knowing that those stones have formed because mm. I feel I say statements like, well, I should just be able to do whatever I want to do, or why do I have to, why do I have to conform to what seems to be what everybody wants me to do? But realizing, is that a stone? And so now you don't even know that you've built up this stony heart where your heart really should be softened. And here's the here's the scariest part about that. You say, Well, I don't have a hardened heart, but it might manifest in different ways. You might have built a stone towards someone's actions or what someone might have said or done and it manifests through your children mm. and they didn't deserve they didn't deserve what the the vibes that you were putting off because now you've built up a stony heart as a as a oppose of one that is one of flesh so realizing that you don't belong to your that you're not your own but still understanding that no, I didn't, I didn't voice my truth in a loving way. I didn't voice how I was really feeling. And now you've said something or you've done something or I have, here it is, thought something and it's built up a wall of stone wow. in my heart. That's, that's key. That, can we stay there for just a yeah. moment? Um, th there, is, uh, mm -hmm. there is a teaching that, that we've had here at the church uh, and I've, I've done before. I wish I made it up. I didn't. Uh, but one of the counselors um, developed this. Uh, this teaching over in, in Hidden Night. Yes, Pastor Denise uh, Boggs. Pastor Denise Boggs. This is her writing. Pastor Denise Boggs. You always give credit to who, who God gave it to. Pastor Denise Boggs. Yes. Um, and the way God showed her, and I believe is 100% accurate, your heart does not turn into stone as a whole. Right. There are small pebbles. So if you can look at this cup, if you can think about this cup, every time they call you out your name, a small pebble drops in. Every time they disappoint you, another small pebble goes in. Every time um, the pain happens or the neglect happens or the abandonment happens, whatever the case may be, another stone goes in. And before you know it, those stones build up and fill your heart. Mm. It, it fills your heart with small memories, with small instances. And now you have a heart filled with stones, mm. plural. Right. It is a stony heart. Mm. So when they apologize and so the offending mm. spouse needs to listen to this, I'm going to help you. The offending spouse needs to understand that one apology removes one stone. Yes. yes. This is what we don't like. We, we want to say, I said, I'm sorry. Yes, you said you were sorry. Yes, you apologize. But there are 50 stones in here. And so when you apologize for cursing them out, it does remove one stone, but you got 49 left. And when you didn't come home that night and you apologize for it, another stone comes out. Or when you disrespected him in front of his friends and you apologize, only one stone comes out. But there were 10 friends there. That's 10 stones. <laughs> and so you, so, so you want to apologize once for 10 years of pain and then you say things like, get over it. Right. I'm, te I'm teaching good teaching right now. Good. And, and psychologically, I am unable to get over 10 years of pain right. with one apology, save the Holy Spirit yes. come in right. and pull all of that out at the same time. Now, God can absolutely do that. Right. 
God can absolutely do that. And you got to be careful because you can't, you can't be unwilling to let them apologize. You cannot be unwilling to let them work through emptying out all of that, all of those stones and building back a heart of flesh. Now, let me go one step further and then we go move forward. Okay. If every offense puts one stone in, every apology pulls one stone out, pretty soon, God willing, all of those stones are removed, but now they're empty. It's empty. Now you have to fill them up with love. Right. Because what we do is we'll apologize our way out of it, right. but the problem becomes we never fill them back up. A lot of scholars, a lot of uh, counselors call it the love tank. Right. right. You got to fill up their love tank with kind words with. Well, I said kind words, but the kind word couldn't get in because of the heart of stone. Now that it's free. Now you have to use words of affirmation. Now you have to use words of love, words of kindness to build up that heart of love. And we have scripture for that. So in Genesis, God did that. God literally said the earth was out form or void. Yeah. It was blank. It was yes. a blank slate. So now yes. you have this emptiness that is voided. But he said, you know, I don't want to leave it void. So I'm going to put plants. I'm going to give water. I'm going to put animals. I love it. I'm going to put myself. I'm going to I'm going to give you I'm going to make man in my own image. He did not leave something that was void. Yeah. Vacant. He filled it to make it full again or to make it what he wanted it to look like. So I think a part of rebuilding that heart is filling it with the things that you desire to see manifest. I love that. That's, yeah. that's absolutely correct. Um, because you want to get out of it more than you ever put in it. Yes. Oh, that's good. And that's not fair. Right. That's not fair. You are expecting them to give you uh, more than you invested. Mm. Oh, that's good, everybody. Make, make sure you understand that you have, you have to invest in order to reap a harvest. Mm. Ooh, you ought to say amen through there. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's keep going because we're going to run out of time. Okay. Uh, and I want to make sure I get to as much of this as I can. Um, you also have to recognize your imperfections. Many times we are able to point out what everybody else does wrong, mm -hmm. but we are unable to see what we do wrong. Right. Um, and here's, I'm getting ready to tell you one of the biggest lies we all tell. Here it is. This is one of the biggest relationship lies that we all tell. And we believe it. Uh -oh. It's wrong, but we believe it. You know, Pastor Show, Co-Pastor Jackie, I don't really ask for much. Yikes. Everybody asks for a lot. I do? Yes, you do. <laughs> Bless your heart. Like I did. <laughs> Everybody asks for a lot. No, all, all I ask for is this and that. That's it. No, that's not true. What you're really saying is they do so many things that you aren't thanking them for that you don't even recognize how close to perfection they are. Mm. If you only need two things, that means they're doing the other 98. Oh, my Oh my. And you don't even recognize how good they are at doing those other things. All I want is, no, you want a whole lot. Mm. So you got to own that. And then also own your imperfection areas, the areas that you need to get better. Right. Because you have some blind spots. Yes, we do. You have some, everybody has some yes, areas that they don't see that they need somebody to help them check. Because otherwise... You'll keep living your life thinking you're pe perfect. So recognize your imperfections. And then uh, when we were talking, you said, remember your yes. Right. Remember and that's really yes. good. To, to, to Christ um, and covenant. Like your yes is, uh, we're talking about marriages. So you said yes to Christ first. As far as your vows are concerned, uh, you stood before the Lord and said, I will do these things. And so recognizing your yes, you said yes for a reason. And so understanding why did I even say yes? Was it for a moment or was it for ministry? And ministry means a lifetime. Like, did I say yes I like to a lifetime or did I just say yes to this moment or this fleeting moment? Was I unwise with my yes? Was I irresponsible with my yes? But nonetheless, you said yes. So recognizing and remembering, remembering why did I say yes? Because you even said um, to those who have accepted Jesus into your heart, you said yes to him. So what does that even look like? 
wow, as far cool. as your life not being your own because it even says, um, I think Paul even said that it is, it is our responsibility to lay down our life as Christ did for us. That is, that is our response. We said it in 1 John in the beginning of this teaching. It is, it is important to understand, why did I even get into this? Why did I say yes? And before I say yes and I will or I do, I need to make sure that I mean my yes. That's so good. Make sure you mean your yes because, uh, and I want you to go here if you can. You, you mentioned uh, just in us preparing mm -hmm. that it's impossible to be right with God. Mm. Can you, can you say that? Yeah, it's, it's impossible to be right with God or saying, well, I have sought the Lord. Or I have talked with the Lord and be bitter or negligent towards your spouse. That's so good. Negligent doesn't necessarily have to mean that I'm abandoning you or I'm, or I'm uh, talking to you inappropriately. It could be that I'm not talking at all, that I have completely shut down into silence because I have not only quarantined in this home, but I've quarantined in my heart. And now wow. no one or no thing can get in. So now I think that I'm right with God because I'm just seeking the Lord. I'm just, I want to know what the Lord is saying that I'm supposed to do. But you've, it's secretly, I just want to free you. Secretly, you've shut your heart off even to your spouse because now you, you've become bitter. And like Pastor was talking about before, all of these stones have built up to a place where I won't let anyone in. And that's a dangerous place. Yes. Because who, he who does not like um, uh, uh, wisdom is, is a fool. And who does Proverbs. not like, yeah, if you, do, if you don't listen to wisdom, you're going to pay for it later. And we talked about that. Yes. Like making those decisions to say, I want to do it my way. I want to do, I want to have everything my way. What does that look like when yes. you make those decisions to, to not remember your yes or be in that moment? Can I say yeah, something? Sure. I want to interrupt you for just yeah. a moment. Forgive me. When COVID has ended, mm. will you have ruined your life? Because you didn't remember your yes. Wow. When COVID has ended, will you be left with a life that you altered and then created a new one that wasn't in God's plan? Ugh. And now you're stuck to live with the remnants mm. of, of permanent decisions based on temporary information. So good. That's critical. Yeah. That's critical. Okay, we're running out of time. We have, we have three minutes. Let's go. So let's, let's, let's go to Real Love Requires. Here it is, everyone. Real Love Requires. I'm going to give you four things and then we're gone. Real Love Requires real communication. Yes. Uh, your communication has to go to another level. Uh, you have to be honest on another level. You have to be <laughs> critically honest but still with love right. on another level. Real love requires real Communication. You cannot ask for a real man or woman and give them the fake you. I know that's right. Say that again. You cannot ask God to give you a real husband or wife and all you present is a fake you. Mm. So you have to give real communication. That's number one. Number two, real love requires real covenant. Mm. Say covenant. Covenant. Take divorce out of your vocabulary. Mm. There is no reason... For the word divorce to be in, no, there's no way out. I want you to be here. I want you to be committed to this process. Both of you, no hardened hearts, no stony hearts. So we have real communication. We have real covenant. Then a real context. Would you, would you say yeah, something about real that? Context. Real context. You have to work with your reality. You have to live within what you have already created. So yes. what does that look like? We don't, we, we don't live with in a world where it's reality TV, although it's everywhere. That's what we see. That's what's presented before our eyes. You turn on the TV and it's, and it's right before your eyes. But you have created a real context. This is real. I'm going home to him. I live with him. I don't live with someone on a screen. So I cannot give him those expectations that I see from a yes. screen that has been scripted, edited, and cut and I see the highlight reel of what you want to be presented. No, I have a real context. So I have to live yes. within and work within my reality. And everybody's reality is not the same. So live within what you have already created. Because 
If you don't, you'll find yourself short or altering something that should have never been changed in the first place. So the last one, Pastor, we said real communication, real covenant, real context, real change. You have to be willing to make adjustments. We don't make excuses. Right. We make adjustments. Life is happening. For sure. So what we have to do is adjust. Right. We love you guys. We appreciate you so very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for this opportunity to minister to you. It, it's a privilege of ours to be able to come to you in this manner. We want to pray for you. We want to offer you the opportunity to be a part of Have Life Church. We want to offer you the opportunity to come to know Jesus. And that information is readily available. But I want to pray for everyone, whether you're in a relationship or out of a relationship. We want to minister to the Lord very, very quickly. But then I also want you to be, a, be able to sow. Everybody, wherever you are, we want you to sow. We want you to give. We want you to give God an opportunity to increase your life. That information, whether it's text to give, whether you want to use our website or push pay or other outlets, we want you to sow into the house of God. We have a responsibility to make sure the house of God has what it needs. If your house has needs, then you know the house of God has needs. There's so many people who dealt with loss financially uh, throughout the last year, year and a half. We understand where you are. And to you, we're praying for you and believing God for restoration of finances. But let's not play games. Some people never missed a check. So don't hide behind that. Some people, you know, never missed a check. And you're living in, with a mind of financial uncertainty because the enemy's been messing with your mind. But God's been right on time and keeping you. To you, I'm saying, let's honor God in our giving. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. And I honor you, Father, for being so good to us and so kind. I'm asking Holy Spirit that you would peek in on each and every relationship, that you would release your angels to love on your people, whether they are unmarried or married. Lord, those who are unmarried and seeking relationships, minister to them, God, and show them, let them peek over your shoulder and see the blueprint of their lives. Because if marriage is for them, God, we want them to prepare. But if you've called them to a life of singleness, we want them to be able to accept your perfect will. But Lord, I also pray for those who are unsure we want the revelation, the discernment of the Holy Spirit to begin to guide them in their lives. Lord, touch every marriage. We come against the spirit of divorce. We're asking Holy Spirit that you give them love for one another again. Give them a heart for one another. Lord, I'm asking specifically that you would begin to remove, help them remove the stones from their hearts so that they can become hearts of flesh, soft hearts towards each other. Let your grace abound even the more in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, there are people right now that are about to give their life to Jesus. There are more people that are about to become a part of Half Life Church. But everybody, no matter who you are, you're about to give. Do your best. Do your best. God is watching. We love you. Until next time.